Once you have logged in to the EMR portal, please select the Applications tab. Once selected, please then create a new application. Please select the company information from the drop down. Please select the technology type from the drop down. Please select the round that your technology type is eligible for. Then select Create. The first window you'll be presented with is the General tab. The General tab will cover some of the general requirements of the CFD application. Firstly, the applicant will need to declare if the CFD unit overlaps with any excluded sites to which the temporary exclusion applies. If the applicant selects yes in response to question new A, a new field will appear asking the applicant to provide a copy of the exemption certificate. If no file is uploaded in this scenario, the application will be rejected. If the applicant selects no to question new A, then please move on to the next question technology type in A9 is predetermined when the application is created. The applicant can then move on to the incorporation tab. The incorporation tab is split into four sections, company and applicant details, agent details where applicable, phase details and VAT details. If the application is being created on behalf of a joint venture or an organisation, then the applicant should select no and a new question will appear which will reveal an upload functionality. If the application is being made on behalf of a company, the applicant should select yes to question A2. The next section to complete is the company details section. This should be auto populated on the applicant's behalf with the details provided at registration. Question A3G refers to the region in which the company is located. The choices are England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Please note, if the applicant selects Northern Ireland, a new section will appear further down the application form called Agent Details. Questions A3H to A3K are the details that will be used by the Low Carbons Contract Company to contact successful applicants, specifically the email address of the preferred contact. Further down, questions A4 to A4B cover the Certificate of Incorporation Upload and any supporting clarification that may need to be provided. Moving on to the CFD unit phase details. Please note that all technologies applying for a CFD have a single phase unless they are offshore wind, fixed bottom only, where they can have a maximum of three phases. If the applicant selects yes to question A11, then the company details will be auto populated with the information provided in the company's details section of the application form. If no is selected, then the applicant will need to manually populate these fields. Moving on to question new D. If the applicant selects yes, the information will be auto populated. And if the applicant selects no, then they will need to manually enter the information. In practical terms, question A11 refers to the person who will be named on the CFD contract and question new D refers to the contact that will be receiving the notices of the contract. Moving on to VAT details. If the answer to question 20 is no, then the applicant can move on to the next tab. If the applicant selects yes, 
they will need to provide a VAT registration number or equivalent and upload a VAT certificate of registration or tax certificate. The applicant can then move on to the CFD unit details tab. The applicant will need to populate the name and address of the CFD unit. If the proposed CFD unit is located offshore or has no address, then the applicant should provide the address of the nearest onshore substation. Questions B2 to B3G require the applicant to provide the Ordnance Survey grid references for the extreme coordinates of each northerly, easterly, southerly and westerly of the site where the CFD unit is located. Question new G requires the applicant to upload a map. The map will need to meet the allocation framework definitions of a map, which means a map showing the scale, name, shape of the CFD unit and the longitude and latitude in WG S84 format to three decimal places of the northerly, easterly, southerly and westerly extreme coordinates of the site where the CFD unit is located. The Ordnance Survey grid reference in question B2 of the application should be for the centre of the site where the CFD unit is located. Please note that for applicants choosing Remote Island Wind, there is an additional question titled Question New B10. It is a requirement to upload a schematic diagram demonstrating that the remote island wind condition in Regulation 27A 3D has been met. For floating offshore wind applicants, there are additional questions titled New GI, New GII and New GIII. You will need to upload two documents here, as specified, and make a declaration that all turbines forming part of the relevant CFD unit are situated in offshore waters of at least 45 metres in depth. These conditions are referenced in the CFD Miscellaneous Amendments Regulations 2021, Regulation 27A. We will not be demonstrating these technologies on this demo, but please refer to the NGESO CFD guidance documents for examples of floating offshore wind and remote island wind technology walkthroughs. The applicant will then need to populate the phase details of the CFD unit. All technology applications will be for a single phase, apart from offshore wind, which has the option of having two or three phases. If it's two to three phases for offshore wind, the next section will need to be repeated for each phase. However, for demonstration purposes, I will only be demonstrating one phase. Moving on to question B10. The applicant will need to determine whether the CFD unit applying is established or altered capacity. The applicant will then need to input the provisional capacity estimate of the project. For solar PV projects, the capacity estimate must be entered as the AC capacity figure. Applicants will then need to specify the target dates for the proposed CFD unit. One thing to note is that the target commissioning date needs to fall within the delivery years. We have examples of the earliest and latest dates that an applicant can have relating to the relevant delivery year. Please refer to the allocation guidance document for more detail. Next up is the reference price that applies to the CFD unit. This is a fixed field and will be auto populated for you. The AR5 standard terms notice will detail if the technology type reference price is intermittent or base load. Moving on to the cross subsidy tab. On the cross subsidy tab, questions C1 to C8, the applicant will be asked to declare that the CFD unit is not in receipt of the subsidies for the capacity market, the contracts for difference, non fossil fuel order, or the Scottish renewables obligation. The applicant will need to complete the relevant declarations in relation to other government subsidies. 
The delivery body checks the location of the CFD unit details against public data to identify the shape and boundary of the site and to ensure that the CFD unit being applied for is not already in receipt of one of these subsidies. Moving on to the applicable planning consents tab. At this stage, the applicant is required to provide all the planning consents applicable to the proposed CFD project. In the application, the applicant must demonstrate that either the applicable planning consents do not apply or that the applicable planning consents obtained for the relevant works enable the proposed CFD unit to be established or altered and electricity generated from the proposed CFD unit to be exported to the national transmission system, the distribution system or a private network. Schedule 5 of the Allocation Framework Chapter 3 of the Allocation Regulations 2014, as amended, and the ESO application guidance will support applicants on the eligibility criteria for the planning consents, including the requirements on documentary evidence, name, location, megawatt, dates, and technology categories. There are five sections which the applicant can provide data for. Development order, Transport Works Act Order, Planning Permission, Section 36, and Marine Licence. Any uploaded documentation in these categories must include a signed and dated planning decision notice. Starting with the Development Order. This is the Development Order Consent under Section 114 of Planning Act. If a Development Order is one of your applicable planning consents, then this must be provided. Answer yes to question D1 and provide the file in D1A. When providing documentation, this can be uploaded as a single document or if multiple documents are required, then please upload these contained in a zip file. Should your development order require any clarification, then you can provide this information in question D1B. For example, if the planning consent specifies a technology which is different from the technology that is in the application, evidence must be provided to clarify this. There are also fields D3 to D8, which applicants can complete to assist the delivery body with locating key parts of information from the uploaded documentation. For example, where the OS reference capacity or expiry date can be found. Please note that the delivery body will review each uploaded document in its entirety. If the development order is not an applicable planning consent for your project, then please select no and provide the reason as to why it is not required in D2. This is the process which should be followed for each of the sections below. Moving to the next applicable planning consents questions with the Transport and Works Act order in D9. The Transport and Works Act order is only required if the applicant is an offshore wind project located in Welsh waters. The tab will be unselectable if your project does not meet this criterion. The applicant is required to complete the field with a yes or no and then complete the follow-up questions accordingly. With planning permission in D17, Section 36 in D25 and the Marine Licence in D33, applicants should complete the following sections answering yes or no and provide the required information. All sections follow the same premise, asking the applicant to complete with a yes or no and provide the applicable signed documentation where required. As a reminder, the delivery body will be performing checks on each section where planning consents have been provided. The Schedule 5 checks will be undertaken. This involves checking the location for the proposed CFD unit. The delivery body will check the capacity in the planning consents is equal to or more than the initial installed capacity estimate of the CFD unit specified in the application. The delivery body will check that the date of the application is before the date on which the applicable planning consent expires. 
The delivery body will also check that the technology of the proposed CFD unit specified in the applicable planning consent appears to be the same as specified in the application. Finally, after all the applicable planning consent documentation has been uploaded, applicants are required to complete the declaration in question D41. This declaration is to confirm that the applicable planning consents provided apply to the CFD unit and cover the works to allow the CFD unit to supply electricity to the transmission, distribution or private wire network. It is important to scroll to the bottom of the page to capture this question. Further support on applicable planning consents required for CFD applications can be found in Chapter 3 of the Allocation Regulations 2014 as amended and the Allocation Framework. The applicant can now move to the Connection Agreements tab. In this section, applicants will be able to provide the Connection Agreement, Countersign Connection Offers with the Acceptance Document, or Private Network Use Agreement documentation applicable to the CFD application. Applicants will be presented with question E1 where applicants are able to confirm the type of connection that will apply to the CFD unit. The possible options are direct, partial and islanded CFD unit. Where a direct connection applies or is to apply to the relevant CFD unit, a copy of the connection agreement applicable to the CFD unit which allows for such connection to the relevant transmission system or distribution system. Where a partial connection applies or is to apply to the relevant CFD unit, the applicant must provide a copy of the connection agreement applicable to the CFD unit. If the owner of the CFD unit is not the owner of the private network, then a copy of the private network use agreement applicable to the CFD unit is required as an addition. Where an islanded CFD unit connection applies or is to apply to the relevant CFD unit, a statement confirming that no direct connection or partial connection currently exists or will exist in the future, and if the applicant is not the operator of the private network, then a copy of the private network use agreement between the applicant and the operator of the private wire network. In this example, the type of connection selected will be direct. Applicants will then be presented with question E2, where a selection must be made as to whether the CFD unit will be transmission or distribution connection. Question E2 is not applicable if the applicant selected islanded CFD unit as no connection to the network will be initiated. The options here are transmission, distribution. If the applicant selects distribution, then the applicant must confirm if the project intends to be license exempt embedded or license connected. The definitions of the two can be found in Schedule 1 of the Allocation Framework. In this example, the transmission connection will be selected. The applicant will then need to provide a copy of the connection agreement or countersigned connection offer between the applicant and the transmission system operator in question field E7 including signed acceptance forms where applicable. When uploading the connection agreement documentation, including the connection offers and the acceptance letters, please ensure that this is signed by both parties and meets the criteria as stated in Schedule 5 of the Allocation Framework. Also, it is important to note that if the project technology type is offshore wind and is transmission connected, then additional questions will appear. The applicant must confirm if single metering or apportioned metering applies to each phase of the project. This question path will only show if the above criteria is met in the application form and further information can be found in the guidance. There are a number of validation checks that the delivery body will perform on this uploaded documentation. In this direct transmission example, some of these are Firstly, the transmission entry capacity specified in the connection agreement is at least 75% of the initial installed capacity estimate of the CFD unit. Next is the target commissioning date specified in the application for when the CFD unit is established or altered as relevant, appears to be on or after the connection date specified in the connection agreement. 
There is nothing in the connection agreement that indicates that the technology of the CFD unit to which the connection agreement applies is not the same as the CFD unit specified in the application form. It is good practice for applicants to check their documents and information against the Schedule 5 checks in the allocation framework, as these are the actual checks which will be conducted in the qualification assessment period. Like in the applicable planning consents tab, there are additional fields E16 to E29. Dependent on the selection made, in which applicants can complete to assist the delivery body with locating key parts of information from the uploaded documentation. For example, where the megawatt capacity, connection date or technology type can be found, please note that the delivery body will review each uploaded document in its entirety. The application guidance provides a view of the other question paths in the applicable planning consents section and the connection agreement section. For example, if you selected partial and distribution or islanded CFT unit, it is not possible to demo all the scenarios, so please take time to familiarise yourself with the specific application question path. Further support on the connection agreement's eligibility requirements for the CFT application can be found in Chapter 3 of the Allocation Regulations 2014 as amended and in Schedule 5 of the Allocation Framework. Once the applicant has completed the connection agreements tab, the next tab to complete is the CFD Contracts tab. The applicant will need to select the CFD agreement they are planning on entering into. In the field F1, options are either generic, private wire, phased single metering, phased apportioned metering, unincorporated joint venture agreement. There are a number of things to note in the CFD contracts tab, starting with Phase CFD agreements are only applicable to offshore wind applications and private network CFD agreements are only applicable if the applicant has selected a partial or islanded CFD unit connection type in the connection agreements tab and unincorporated joint venture CFD agreements are only applicable where the application is an unincorporated joint venture as stated in the incorporation tab. The system has built-in validations to support the applicant. For example, if the applicant was to select the unincorporated joint venture CFD agreement where this is not a valid section, the system will notify the applicant with an error message. In F2, the applicant must select if the standard terms will be used or if a modification agreement has been agreed with the low-carbon contracts company. If the standard terms option has been selected in F2, then in F3, the applicant must provide the version number for the standard terms. For AR5, this will be 5. If the modification agreement option has been selected in F2, then in F4 and F5, the applicant must provide the reference number and the data that the mod agreement was agreed with LCCC. However, for this example, we will enter standard terms and version 5. A change for allocation round 5 is that if the applicant is planning on entering into a private wire CFD agreement, then an additional question in question F6 must be completed. This involves providing evidence that the applicant is the owner of the private wire network. Further information on this requirement can be reviewed in Schedule 5 of the Allocation Framework and in the ESO guidance materials. Once the applicant has completed the CFD contract tab, they can then move on to the Supply Chain Plan tab. If the capacity in megawatts entered into the CFD Unit Details tab is equal to or greater than 300 megawatts, or newly for allocation round 5, the technology type is floating offshore wind at any capacity, then the applicants are required to provide the Supply Chain Plan Certificate they have received from the Secretary of State, and Field G1 will appear. As the capacity for this application is below 300 megawatts, then the requirement doesn't show and the message nothing to fill in currently on this tab is shown.
If I was to go back to the CFT unit details tab and change the capacity to over 300 megawatts, then the field should appear. As you can see there, question G1 has now appeared. It is mandatory to provide a supply chain plan. If the CFD project meets the requirements, then the supply chain plan should have already been issued by the Secretary of State before the application window opens. Further support on the supply chain plan requirement for CFD applications can be found in Chapter 4 of the Allocation Regulations 2014 as amended. Once the applicant has completed the supply chain plan tab, the final tab to complete is the decorations tab. The applicant will need to select the decorations tab and answer the six mandatory decorations. There are also technology specific decorations. The purpose of the decorations tab is for applicants to confirm that the application for the allocation round is not an excluded application and meets the requirements of the allocation regulations. Now each tab is completed, it is worth tracking back through each tab to check all the information has now been provided accurately and the mandatory fields have been completed. Applications can be saved at this point and other users from the company account can log into the EMR portal to review the inputs. For example, if a legal representative needs to review the form. If you are happy with the inputs, then please select Submit. If you are happy with the inputs, then please press Submit. A box will pop up to check if you want to submit. If there are any mandatory fields that have not been completed, the system will generate a list of invalid fields. If any mandatory fields are not completed, then the application may be subject to a non-qualification outcome. Once all the fields have been completed, please submit. The application will now be submitted. The applicant will be assigned an application ID. At this stage, the application can still be reviewed, printed and withdrawn. To submit a new application, applicants can withdraw the application in the application window and resubmit. It is important to get the application submitted in advance of the submission closing deadline. That brings us to the end of the demonstration. Please refer to the published application guidance document and the common errors document for allocation round five. This also includes the contracts for difference allocation regulations as amended, the round specific allocation framework and the CFD guide published on the EMR to Delivery Body website. If you have any follow up questions regarding the application process, or any other CFD process, then please contact the CFD team on emr.cfd at nationalgrideso.com or alternatively, you can call us on 01926 655 300. We hope you find this application video useful.